Hey guys, you're a pretty perceptive bunch, and as you may have noticed from the video title, we've bumped up the number of games to 10 in this video, and for the first time included early access games. Obviously the downside to this is that we don't talk about the games as much, but we're treating this video as kind of experimental to see what you guys want. So if you can help us out, hit up the comments and tell us what you think, or what you want. But after the video is finished of course. But enough jibber jabber, let's get up some games. <laughs> Still a work in progress, Pioneer's Castle is a 16th century explorer wanting to make their mark on history. Navigate through a procedurally generated world on ship, build shelters and trek on land, scavenge what items you can, survive and meet interesting characters along the way. And best of all, it's free. Under the shadow of Olympus, humanity gasps its last breath. Ancient Greek pottery come to life. Apotheon is pure aesthetic genius. The choice of a Greek mythological theme for the story is obvious but nonetheless brilliant and the combat is supplemented by a fantastic selection of weapons that feel distinct and hold the player in check with an negating stamina system. Technically a January title, the Joy Lancer Legendary Murder Knight finally modernizes jousting by putting a horse and lance into the one drill and then packing it into a low color retro side scroller. Think Shovel Knight, but that you always have the propeller dagger. You can go up and down with it and charge it up. Medieval Engineers is a very ambitious sandbox game at the start of a very long early access stage. But the foundations are good, as the creators have a proven track record with Space Engineers. There are a heap of functional medieval structures to build, and the physics are unreal and the graphics are very pretty. Medieval Engineers is a must for any building game nut. Or Bolt for that matter. You can go hard, but instead you could always grow home. In this quirky open world adventure, accentuated by its art and music, you tinker in some botany, trying to rebuild a home planet by planting seeds that sprout to stalk so big that they would even make Jack go, oh shit. The point of all this is to have the giant stalks reach out to a space station and deposit their seeds. And that's all you really need to know about Grow Home. From Nikolas's star Ukrainian artist Matt Kapp, we have Castle in the Darkness at the number 5 spot. It's a game that holds no illusions. It's undoubtedly a metroidvania, with challenging and fast paced action, pixels and a chiptune music soundtrack to match. Castle in the Darkness is a little blast from the past that gives exactly what you'd expect. Sunless Sea is a roguelite that will see you die and subsequently starve from scratch a lot as you traverse its midnight green sea. The tough gameplay is complemented by the fantastic characters and stories that make up the deeply woven and infamously gothic fallen London universe. We're also really enjoying the music in this one. It just knows when to build suspense and really immerse you in the game. The Escapers have finally escaped early access and made it into the promised land of full release. The aim of this game is simply to escape, but Moldy Tooth Studios have just added so much depth to the experience that it becomes a whole lot more. There are so many escape routes, items to craft, and patterns to spot that require you to elaborately plan, timetable, and improvise. The Escapers has a lot harder exterior, but it's serious fun that makes you feel clever. Formerly of the early access kind, Hand of Fate tantalizes with the tastiest game concept you've seen this year. It's a deck builder, 
but every turn, the cards that are placed down form a scenario that you are magically transported into, and the game then becomes a hack and slash brawler. The voice acting of the dealer is top notch, and the whole thing is randomised for heaps of replayability. Everywhere we go, everyone is talking about Darkest Dungeon. It's still early access, but it doesn't seem to matter as this blend of CRPG and roguelike seems as polished as a finished game. And it's a bloody hard one too. Contributing to that is the affliction system that affects the stress of your squad and can lead them to paranoia, masochism or worse. The Lovecraftian monsters are probably responsible for that, but on a less horrific note, the hand-drawn art is lovable. We love Darkest Dungeon. Remember, don't forget to hit up the comments and give us your input as to how these videos should run. Thank you for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former. Give a little thing of my lines. What you guys want. So, after you watch the video, of course, help us out and... <laughs> We're gonna 